She's one of my favorite people in the world. She has over 30 years of experience in the hair industry, working on films like Teal as well as Swarm. Please welcome my friend, Dee Dee Metzger. Thank you so much, Dee Dee, for coming. I love you so much. Thank you I so much. I love you too, Arlene. Oh my God. Um, you have so much experience in the industry. Please tell our viewers like your journey and how you got started in wanting to do something like hair. Well, wanting to do hair, uh, I started in high school, in 11th grade in high school. I yeah. started off as an assistant. Mm -hmm. I played around with my mom and pretended I was going to college for a semester. <laughs> <laughs> Got in college and I was like, no, I want to go back to the salon, make some money. Yes. I started working and it was just something about the way those clients um the the esteem that they carry oh once God, they finish yes. i just i just be, dr what became attracted to that yes. and i wanted to be a part of that that's amazing um what was your journey like beginning and starting out like where did you go to school where are you from i'm from, I'm from here i'm okay, from college from, park georgia okay. yes i was raised in college park i was born in tennessee but college awesome. park raised me yes but um yeah i um started in on that journey of doing hair and mm -hmm. uh, a friend of mine um she asked me if i wanted to assist her and oh. i worked in the salon for several years for um 28 years awesome um and i i love the salon i love clients i actually miss cutting right now yeah oh my god that's my favorite I miss thing to do cutting out of so much oh I my miss god cutting. so i'm i'm really playing around with the idea that we're you know we're off right now i'm like do i need to go rent a suite exactly. somewhere yes. and do some cuts <laughs> And I would only do cuts. Yes, I, only cuts. Yeah. Only cuts, that's it. And I'll act like the new hairstylist where I can make all the rules oh about only, no, the only hairstyles oh I'm doing. I love it. <laughs> yes, yes. I love it. But um, I, you know, started doing hair, missing, uh, you know, love to do cutting, hair cutting. I graduated. Um, I actually uh, went to school at uh, Dimples Beauty College. But as I said earlier, I worked in a salon from 11th grade to um, in 12th, 11th and 12th grade. Mm -hmm. So... I felt like I was too, too, I knew too much for school. <laughs> <laughs> oh so God. right before I finished, I went back to the salon and then I apprenticed and then I got my license wow. as a um, licensed Georgia um, master cosmetologist. Wow. That's amazing. Um, I know when I went to school, when I started out in school, it was so rough for me beginning, mm -hmm. you know, just because I was a mother, a gotcha. young mother and stuff. Gotcha. Do you have any? Um, experiences like that because I know it's people watching them right now that are probably even in school and getting ready to you know just or getting ready to start school that are having that just need some familiarity that to, to let them know that keep going it's gonna be okay yes yes no I um, started in the it, you know in the salon and then I start I transition to um, TV and film yeah and um, I only I have one daughter she's 24 now uh, she's an adult now but when I you know, when I was working, you know, when she was in high school and I was working, juggling both the salon and the uh, film industry, I, you know, I couldn't imagine just, you know, putting her off on somebody. Yes. I wanted her to be, I wanted to be present. Yes. Now, the one, um, um, you know, gift that I inherited from my mother, she's a hustler and she worked hard. She was yes. a single parent. Mm -hmm. And so she was gone a lot. Mm -hmm. And so I just said, you know, I had, she was a single parent. I have a husband. Mm -hmm. There's no reason for me, you know, to yes. be gone so much with right. my child. So I just made that decision. Mm -hmm. So it was tough in the beginning um, because I um, wanted to, you know, dive deep. And I really, you know, was envious, not in a jealous way, but just kind of envious of my friends who had the freedom oh, you to sound like me yeah <laughs> who had the freedom to just like kind of like do whatever they yes, want to they travel have kids, they no husband. exactly oh exactly they can travel as much as they want do an yes. artist they can go on tour so right. i envy you know i envied that yeah you know because again i made the choice to sacrifice to just yes, be present as a parent here. and i think that was the best decision was, i wouldn't change yes, anything oh my God. even though she doesn't appreciate it sometimes well you no. know that's how they do yeah girl. yeah but I would not change a thing. Um, oh, that's amazing. But it, it and it's been hard now that I have you know engulfed fully since 2018 in mm -hmm. the film industry. Uh, people look at my resume and they're like, "You've been in the business for 13 years and you only have this amount of credits." So that's a little tough. Yeah. Um, because you know I've been in a lot of positions where I I was the key or the third. Mm -hmm. 
And I had to play small, but I definitely knew more. Yes, yes you know, based yes. on my experience. Right, exactly. Not that I knew everything, but I just had more experience yeah. than the person that was department mm-hmm. headed. So it was tough sometimes, yes, you know. Yes, yes. And it, it got to a point. It was a couple of projects that I almost I was like, if I get any small, I'm gonna be invisible. Yeah, so yeah. you know, just praying and finding the right people to work yes, with um, yes. on during that journey that yeah. was important to me. That's so important. Mm-hmm. Asking God to send those. Ooh. projects to me um so now you know um i found the balance and you know producers are getting to know yes, who i am and yes. they've seen what i can do right. so now they they trust me yeah, you know to run so it yeah and, and you dropped so many nuggets girl just in the, <laughs> in the 10 minutes that we've been talking like oh my god like as far as like um just being a mother and you know having that time with your child and even though you looking like, dang, that's how I was. Mm-hmm. I really was like that. And I used to I used to really cry to my husband and be like, why haven't I, you know, I know I have the talent. I know I have the gifts. Mm-hmm. Why? Yeah. Why am happens. I sitting still and they're out there? Why? And my husband looked at me one day and he was like, um, do any of these people you're talking about have children? And I was like, <laughs> no. And he's like, well, yeah. are they married? I said, no. He's like, well, I think you need to really think about, you know, what you're saying because yeah. everything happens in its own time. And so I'm so glad you dropped that big nugget. Y'all better catch, y'all better <laughs> catch these nuggets. DD is dropping. You understand me? <laughs> so yeah, um, but yeah, so tell me how you like ventured off into film and TV. Tell me how that experience was. It was good. A friend of mine, she was working in the business. She had been in the business for 20 years. We both went to school together. She happened to choose, you know, that industry. I chose the salon and then we just hooked up and she was like, would you mind assisting me on a project, you know, your off days? And I was like, oh, sure, sure. And I started doing it. At first, I was like, I don't know about this. (laughs) But then when I start thinking about, you know, um, having benefits yes retirement uh, retirement you know um, my pension i thought about that and i had to make that decision but i'm happy i was able to um uh choose uh most people in a when they work in a particular industry they get a certain age and then they can't do it anymore right i'm happy that i could use god's gift to do something else as well or to transcend it transition into something else yes so that was a blessing i was grateful for that yes that's yeah. very important it's in and, and i tell people all the time can you speak on like uh, how you can have more options in like as far as like more more things going on besides just one thing even when you're in the industry because a lot of people um come into the industry with just one egg in the basket and then when something falls through um, you know, they don't have anything else to look on. Is there something you could speak to that to just let people know? That's important to me. That's always even been important to me as a hairstylist yes. in a salon for years. I did not want to depend on my client to provide Ooh, income yes. for me. So yes. I've always been kind of interested in entrepreneurship yes. and doing other things so some up to, so I could generate some uh, other income. Right. But it is so important in the business because I see you know, these young artists and they come in and they, you know, pop in because they have money from the salon and then they're working full time in the business, but they're, they're living like that. You know, I think the best advice I can give, even if you can, it's always good to find other avenues to make money. But even if you can't, and you just have a salon in the business, which is beautiful, Um, spend your money wisely don't live off of what you make Mm -mm. you know if you're blessed enough to have a partner live off one income right i encourage people to do that all the time Mm -hmm. save your money uh if you're on a show you know years ago when i got in the business um some of the the vets they would tell me if you were on a show the first check you got to spend Mm -hmm. uh, and you know put some aside for savings Mm -hmm. and then the next check you got you pay two mortgages mm. and put a little bit aside for savings. Yes. And then the next check, you pay two mortgages mm. and you put a little side, a, a little aside. And then you, you know, the next one, you may spend a little bit more right. and still put a little bit to the side. But when they got off shows, they would have four to five months of mortgage yes. payments paid. Yes. And so they, you know, there were, Atlanta's different now. It's, it's, you know, Hollywood of the that, South. Yeah. So, but when I first started, it was it was slow period. Yes. It was a period where you may work a project for mm-hmm. two or three months, and then after that, it wasn't another one until a couple of months later. Mm-hmm. So you had to actually work mm-hmm. and save and 
and spend on, you know, your budget requires you to plan for the two months you're going to be off. Mm -hmm. So now what I see is younger people, they're, you know, buying the latest car in mm -hmm. the, you know, the Gucci bags. And, and that's good. I love yeah, that. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. I, you know, I want a car right now, Me but, too, girl. but it's some things that I got to do. Yeah. You got to plan around yes. it. But I see how they're making that good money. They see in that check and yeah. they're just spending. Yes. And um, I'm really concerned about them now. Some of the people that I know, cause I know, you know, that this is a tough time yes, for people. And is. if you didn't plan accordingly, yeah, you know, it could be really, it bad, be really bad. You know, yeah. I worry about that for people in our industry. Like yes. Um, so many uh, people uh, who are in the industry need to know that information that you just gave. So thank you so much for giving that. Uh, what are some of your greatest like experiences in film and TV? I know I have a lot, you know, what, what are some of your favorites that you've experienced while being in the industry? Well, um, I, I was working on a project. I'll tell you something funny, mm -hmm. but I was working <laughs> on a project and I haven't seen him yet. I haven't worked with him again since then, but I cannot wait to tell him this. <laughs> but Don Cheatham. <laughs> Was, I was working in the background on the project. Him and Denzel was doing this project. I can't remember the name of the film. Mm -hmm. But him and Denzel were the features in this on this project. And the department head I hadn't met. Mm -hmm. And um, someone had called me that worked on the trailer and, and, you know, asked me if I was available. I'm available. I came to work. I day played. Okay, we're going to give you three days to work. Here are your dates. Come. I came on that first day. And so we're sitting out on the field. Mm -hmm. But I guess they're turning around or something. But it yeah. was something that required a lot of time. Mm -hmm. So I had my iPad and I was playing words with friends. Uh -huh. So I'm <laughs> on my iPad playing words with friends. And in this industry, you know this because I'm sure you've experienced it. A lot of department heads can be a little bit intimidated. And they always are like suspect of this person is on the job doing this. This person might be trying to, as if we, we can magically take their job. Right. So, you know, it's the quorum that you don't interact. I just choose not to. Even I've worked on projects where I know that. Right, actor, you know them. And I'll just, you. Uh -huh, I'll say to the department head, hey, I'm going to just go say hey to such and such. Mm -hmm. I work with them on this. Yeah. Because people are so insecure. Yes. Or if I see a producer, you know, hi, right. you know, yeah. nice to see you. I work with him on. So you have yeah. to kind of. So, um, <laughs> of course, I was being cautious. I have set etiquette. I'm sitting there yeah. and I'm doing just, um, I'm to myself because it's a big, huge feel. Yeah. And he comes over and he gives me a word. And so I put the word in. I said, oh, thank you. And he said, hey, hello, how you doing? I said, I'm fine. He goes away. <laughs> he comes back. He gives me a word. Oh now, mind God. you, on this project, I would say out of the crew of a crew of 200, it might have been maybe 12 black people. Oh, wow. Okay. So, you know, that was it yeah. was. So I, I, I definitely felt like um, he was at home. Oh, he, OK. You know, you yeah, know, familiar. like he, he yes. was just familiar, yes. just being friendly, yes. Yes. letting me know. No, you know, yeah. it was no other conversation. Right. So he gives me another word. Well, he, he's off camera. They tell him he's off camera and they're getting ready to take him to the trailer. Uh huh. He comes back and gets my iPad, takes it from me and stands over me and starts doing it. Oh, my God. Why did the department head come and sit across from me like right when that happened? Jesus. And he's like in full fledged conversation at this point with me. Oh, no. I was like, I don't even know this lady. <laughs> yeah. She's no lady. So oh after God. that, they, of course, removed me from those last two days. Oh, my God. And you already know that's how it goes. Yes. That, that's all going. Do politics ain't going Yes, that, yes. Because yeah. she didn't know who I was. Yeah. And she assumed that it was something I was talking about. You could have been his cousin. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> but if I was his cousin, I probably would have said, hey, Don Cheatham is my cousin. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. we said earlier. Right, so exactly. she didn't know. Yeah. Now, do I act like that? Never. Me either. I refuse. I mean, to. why? Why? It's I like, why? For yes. what? Yes, but I am familiar with the behavior. Uh, and I I'm act, very familiar and, with it. And me. I act accordingly. And yeah, me too. <laughs> Child, me too. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it's it's so much. Um, 
it's great times and then there's times where you're just looking like why am i here yeah 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 <laughs> but that's awesome though that um uh, that actors i've come across so many actors that are so yeah. authentic yeah yeah and just just want to just be um uh, normal yeah and just be friendly and just be friendly yeah. and that's it like even when we did um when we just finished uh bad boys three i think mm -hmm. it was yes well and michelle is the head of hair and tracy's the key over that and um just will smith just nice just i mean you could just tell like yeah. it just exudes from him just so nice so yeah but um tell me some of um the advice that you wish that someone would have told you when you joined the union um when you joined the union being in the union some things that you wish you would have known before that you know now and and then advice that you can give to some of our viewers that are getting ready to go in or thinking about going in uh, I would say, uh, don't play small, mm -hmm. but Please. be but be humble enough enough to acknowledge that you're not the big person in the room. Yes. So, um, and and there there's a big it's, it's a, a balance. balance. It's yeah, a balance it's a trying to figure. Yeah, it's a teeter totter. You have to figure out how to. It's okay to not know everything. Yes. You know, because when people come from the salon, as I did, as you did we've had more practice you know people on set they're only doing two or three people a day right. we're doing 20 people a right. day in the salon 15 yeah. people a day regularly all week so we have more practice yeah so sometimes our skill sets are greater yeah when we come on set but there are still things that we don't know right, right. there's things it might be i can do this and blow her out out the window and or she can do this and blow me out yes. the window it, we can you can always learn from people mm -hmm. even if it's what not to do but right. you can always yes. learn from somebody yes. something oh my god yeah but um you know that would be the advice that i would give just just know when to play small don't take things personal and yeah. then um i wish i had known um when i first got into the industry that people that are mean um be more patient and compassionate for people that are mean because that meanness is insecurity yes and they see your light yeah and you may not even see it or know it's as bright you as it guess. is and so i think oh my um God. you know now that i'm more mature now that i'm older in the business now that i have more experience you know i can i can clock you can in, pick it in up two in seconds, two so seconds. i'm like oh she's just insecure too, yeah. and then sometimes you know when you i feel that pushback from that insecurity mm -hmm. i you know i'm able to now kind of move around it yeah you know make that person feel just a little bit comfortable with yeah. me yeah and that doesn't mean kissing ass no that doesn't mean i'm running the craft right. to hurry up and go get them right something. exactly that doesn't mean that i'm going to get their lunch if i happen to be going that way i yeah, offer yeah. what you like yeah um but um just just learn learning how to just kind of move, man move around yeah. yeah and knowing that that meanness or that it's coming from a place of insecurity yeah and don't I'm, take it personal. i'm still learning i'm still learning that part yeah. i think because my my whole thing is why you yeah, know what i'm saying yeah. why why are you like this you know and i have to just you know i'm not there yet pray for me because <laughs> <laughs> no, like, no. as soon as, as soon as somebody be acting, i'll be like get me the hell up out of here i'm, I'm about to clock out <laughs> right no, you know? no i get it i, get I, it. I, I totally I, I hope i pray that i'm you will you there, will because yeah. the more that you do it it, you're in a position now where you're department head right, anymore. Yes. Um, we both, I guess, you know, are kind of kind of running parallel in yeah. the business. <laughs> our, our, you know, um, chance to prove ourselves as department heads are kind of coming at the same yes. time. But um, as you department head more, mm -hmm. you're going to see what stress them didn't stress yes. you. Yes. Oh my you know God. how they move in the trailer, no. how they manage now, people. That's, that is what I learned. Exactly. I say so I you got it. I said I don't want to be this person. Exactly. So, so you got yeah, it. You yeah, got I it. knew. I said, Lord, don't ever let me be that person to be like, like treat someone else mm -hmm. that way. You know, because yeah. I knew how I felt for somebody to treat me that way. I didn't ever want anybody else to feel that way in my presence. So yeah, yeah. no. In 2018, when my daughter. You know, when she graduated, I'm like, oh, yes, I can finally do it. I'm finally free. I can work as many hours as I want to. <laughs> I started working in the, you know, in the full fledged, full time in the industry. And I was like, Lord, I didn't leave my clientele to deal with this. Because I didn't deal in drama when we I was in the salon. Salon. 
Yeah. So I had a choice. So I was like, I didn't leave that freedom to come into this, to come into this and have to deal with this. So it got to the point where I had department heads back to back. And I had to have a conversation with my father. Yeah. And I said, if you want me to really do this, yes. if this is where you want yes. me to be, show me an example yes. that it doesn't have to be like that. Yeah. Just show me yeah. an example. Please. And I got three uh, different positions as keys back to back where he showed show me different department good. heads. Shout out to all of the wonderful department heads out yeah. there. We love and adore you guys because authenticity, there's nothing like it. There's mm -hmm. nothing like somebody just being confident within exactly. themselves and not letting you know anything shake you out of that confidence exactly knowing who you are and knowing that god put you in a position that nobody can take you out of there's nothing like that so shout out to all of yes. the leaders and i call them leaders those are true leaders yeah in the yeah. industry it's not necessary no, to act none like of that. that is necessary yeah. so shout out to all the true leaders out there thank yeah. you yes yeah. yes yes so didi tell me do you have any like uh pivots that you um, want to do in the future like something and I'm not saying that you're gonna get out of the industry But we already know this is concrete here in the industry, you know Continuing in film and TV, but is there anything else that you would like to pivot towards and other things you want to do? Um, outside of the industry while you're still working in film and TV So right now what I'm doing is looking for a land to you know find a warehouse because my goal is to have a plaza that's amazing yeah with retail spaces yes and um i have so many goals yes i'm that person that's good yeah. i always have so many goals yes. but that's probably on the top of my list and in um getting um, investment properties yes yes, yes. We're, we're on that um journey right now david and i getting investment properties mm -hmm. and just trying to accumulate as many as we possibly can exactly exactly <laughs> so when it is time to retire or whenever i just want to just say i'm done yeah yeah then i still have you know all of these different other things that we you know yeah. can do so i encourage everybody that's listening to us to definitely invest whether it be in properties yeah. or whether it be in stocks you know, uh, whether it be in uh, businesses, it doesn't matter. Just invest, invest, invest. While you don't here. depend on one thing. Yes. You never depend on one thing. Never depend on one thing. Mm -hmm. Any final words uh, for, for our people out there? I'm just happy to be here. I am ready to go back to work. Yes. You and I talked about that earlier. <laughs> I remember, uh, you know, saying that once I get my plaza, I'm yes. not coming back to doing this. No, I have discovered <laughs> doing the <laughs> side <laughs> here. I love to work. You love to work, and I do too. I yes. Do too. I love to work in great environments. Let me just say yeah, that. That's true. That's <laughs> but true. I want to say this before we uh, before we uh, tell everybody bye. I want to tell you how much of a light. Uh, I don't want to get emotional, but I do want to oh. tell you how much of a great bright light you are, are and have been to me even oh. before I even got into the union. Um, I remember seeing you on um, the Monique show. Um, I was doing straighten up, Arlene. Come on, get it together. <laughs> Um, I was doing, um, dang, I forgot, Cece Pennyston's hair for the Monique show. She just, girl, she just hired me just to do her hair for that day. And I saw you behind backstage or whatever. And I was like, there's Diddy, because I used to see you on you like uh, Facebook and yes, stuff like yes. that. So I never like met you personally or anything like that. But I saw you and you, and you said, who did her hair? And I said, I did. And you said, that was good. <laughs> <laughs> And it was as if God told me that that was good. Yeah, okay. I felt so good the rest uh, of my life. And I never forgot that. So you never know, like, whose life you're going to touch. You never know, like, you know, how much of a difference that you can make in somebody else's life. Yeah. So thank you so much for doing that for me. And, and I think, that. and let me say this, <laughs> I think what you're doing here is wonderful. Yes. And I am so excited for you and happy I'm so for you. excited and too. And congratulations again <laughs> on your nomination. Thank you. Yes. I'm so, to God be the glory. I did not, I knew that it was something coming down the pipes, but I didn't know that it was going to be this big. Yes. Thank y'all so much for uh, joining in. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go before my eyes start really getting watery and everything like that. But thank you so much, Dee for coming. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. I enjoyed it. See y'all next time.